Welcome to the Photograph Preservation Workshops presented by the Missouri Secretary of State's Office Record Services Division. You will be hearing from archivists and conservators with the Missouri State Archives and Local Records Program who handle materials for state government agencies. The first workshop provides a brief introduction to the series, gives a general history of photography, and provides links to resources to further help you with your photographic needs. The workshops are made possible with a grant from the National Historical Publications and Records Commission of the National Archives. The content is intended for the general public, specifically people interested in identifying, conserving, and sharing their photograph collections. We hope this is you. The module topics are photograph identification, which aids in the identification of photographic processes. Module three provides suggestions on storage, display, and handling of photographs. The fourth module is split into two parts. Part one tackles photographic conservation issues and part two delves into disaster recovery. Modules five and six zoom in on color and digital photographs. And finally, module seven recommends methods to record information about your photographs and share them with others. The title image here depicts the evolution of photography from today's modern cell phones, let's take a selfie, to yesterday's stand still for 30 seconds, glass, metal, and print photographic processes. You will even notice a painter creating an image of a person in her studio. Is a painting a photograph? Well, no, but it is an image. Photographs are created by light exposed on a sensitive plate, film, or digital array. This creates an image of what that light reflects. So, photographs are images. However, not all images are photographs. For example, this painting by Thomas Hart Benton and the illustrated Black Pearl trademark are images, but not photographs. However, the little girl with the ice cream cone is a photograph and an image. Confused? The best way to put it is that all photographs are images, but not all images are photographs. We're telling you this because throughout these modules, we will be using the terms photograph and image interchangeably. Photography began in the 19th century with the daguerreotype invented by Louis Daguerre of France in 1839. Shortly thereafter, Henry Fox Talbot of England came out with the calotype. This poster from the Florida Memory Project is a wonderful depiction of the most common photographic processes used over time. Different processes use different materials, and some of your photographs at home may be glass-based, metal-based, film-based, paper-based, and or digitally based. It is our hope that when these workshops are completed, you will have a basic understanding of how to identify, care for, and share all your photographs, no matter the format. The Florida Memory Poster is just the beginning of the dozens of photographic and printing out processes in the world. This scrolling list isn't even the half of it. The array of photographic materials is rather amazing. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Some even need light for best viewing, such as the slides, glass plates, negatives, and positive color transparencies on the light table at the end of this clip. We know the formats look overwhelming, but never fear. We will focus on the most common processes and walk you through identifying them and caring for them. Photographs are unique depictions of history frozen in time. They inform us of the past and help keep it alive. Your goal is for your photographs to last from generation to generation, and it is our hope that what we present in these modules will help you do just that. Speaking of outside resources, we recommend the Graphics Atlas, created and hosted by the Image Permanence Institute. The site provides an interactive way to identify your photographs. For those of you who prefer printed resources, we recommend the book Photographs, Archival Care and Management by Mary Lynn Rissenthaler and Diane Voigt O'Connor. It's considered the go-to book for photograph archivists. The content can be advanced, but if you're willing to take the plunge, it is certainly worth it. 
If you have any questions on any of the modules, please feel free to contact the Missouri State Archives at the addresses here, and we will make sure your inquiry gets to the right person for an answer.